Good morning, saints, merciful ones. You know, the Lord has just been releasing a tremendous amount of revelation in the last couple weeks. Um, I've released very little of it, um, and I don't know if I'll if I'll release all that to YouTube or not. I've been releasing it to some different people, but um, I want to introduce you to something today to cause a shift. I'm not going to release the fullness of it because um, it might be a little bit more than you can put down at once. Um, but it's in regards to Isaiah chapter 60, verse 8. Um, you know, and I memorized chapter 60, I don't know what it was, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and just the release of revelation that is coming out of this is, is astounding to me. Um, what the Lord, the Holy Spirit is pulling together through that. Um, and so in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 8, it said, who, says, Who are these who fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows. First of all, let's look at the context of Isaiah 60 and we'll actually back up to the very end portion of Isaiah 59 where it says, the enemy shall come in like a flood. But the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. The Lord shall, the enemy shall come in like a flood, but the Lord shall raise up a standard, an ensign, a banner. The Lord shall raise up a standard against him or against it. And so that is what is leading into Isaiah chapter 60, which is the glory of Christ coming forth out of Zion, out of a people, and Christ's scepter coming forth out of that place to rule. And it's important to understand the timing of these things, when they are going to happen, and the scripture is very clear. That first, the enemy is going to come in like a flood. And then the Lord is going to raise up a standard against him, against it. And that standard is Christ being manifested out of Zion, out of a people, in whose hearts he has appeared. And so Isaiah chapter 60, of course, uh, will just begin, start in the beginning. Who are the, uh, arise, shine, for thy light is come. Of course, as David said in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. See, that word for salvation is Yeshua. It's, it's being clothed in him and radiating him. And this is what Isaiah chapter 60 is talking of, is the fulfillment of the glorified body, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That hope of glory is that which Isaiah 60 is speaking to us. This glory of the glorified body coming out of Zion, a people. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise. Upon these, not in the text, is talking about him arising in the heart. But the Lord shall arise, and his glory shall be seen. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness 
of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about thee and see. They gather themselves together. They come unto thee. Thy sons come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. This is all nations flowing, coming to Zion to see the light of Christ. This is the gospel that's going to invade the entire earth. And they shall see Christ in a people that have become one with him. And so now, so this is the context. Now I want to jump to verse 8. Where it says, Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows? See, Isaiah, in seeing this glory, asked this question. And so I want to take you, before I finish here, I want to take you real quick to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. 11, 11. Isn't that interesting? 1, 1, 1, 1. 1 Peter 1, 11. Which says, uh, the second part says, uh, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. This is talking, Isaiah 60 is talking about this glory that should follow. So let's read the context here of First Peter. And we'll go to verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively or a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible. This inheritance incorruptible is the glorified body. Of course, Ephesians speaks of this, um, that the Holy Spirit is given to us for a token, a down payment, until the redemption of the purchased possession. And Ephesians chapter 1 speaks about we have been given an inheritance, and this is what Paul is talking about, this hope of glory, the glorified body. And the Holy Spirit is just a token of that until the redemption of the purchased possession, until the King of glory comes and sits in the heart of those people and his light shines out and their bodies are glorified. This is the inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. Well, I thought I was already saved. Through faith unto salvation. Salvation in the Greek is soteria. Salvation in the Hebrew is Yeshua. See, what is the fullness of salvation? It is to be fully clothed with Christ. The garments of salvation is to be fully clothed with Christ and in its fullness in the glorified body that he exhibited upon Mount Zion to Peter and to John. And to James. When he, before going to the cross, and as he talked there on Mount Zion with Moses and Elijah about the sufferings that he was going to be performing, but the sufferings to, that he was going to perform and the glory that would follow. And there upon Zion, his glory shone forth. The brightness of the firmament of heaven. And Peter, James, and John 
beheld his glory on that holy mount. The transfiguration of Christ, which is a prefiguring of the glory that we are going to step into. As it says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, We also have a more sure word of prophecy. And that more sure word of prophecy is speaking of Isaiah chapter 60, another place, where it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And the Lord shall arise, and his glory shall be seen. Arise in your heart. We also have a more sure word of prophecy, that you do well to take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. This is Christ in you, the hope of glory, a glorified body in him. Verse 4 again of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious, than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. It's talking about him appearing in the heart. Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing. It's talking about him appearing in your heart. See, as, as David said in First Samuel chapter 16, verse 27, glory and honor are in his face. Mm. Glory and honor are in his face. As his face appears in your heart, your true identity, face to face, beholding him, there is where the crown of glory and honor. And once again, we receive that inheritance incorruptible, that glorified body. might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, in whom you now see not, yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yet believing. Believing what? Not just believing Christ, but believing what the prophets said. This hope of glory that the Christ is going to rise upon your heart and your inheritance is this glorified body. This is the high calling of God in Christ Jesus to ascend to the throne, to become one with him, to glorify him on the earth. As Isaiah 63 says, Man has not heard nor perceived with the ear, neither has eye seen, O God, beside thee what thou hast prepared for them that waiteth for thee, that love thee. It's the glory that he has prepared. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently and prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, Searching what or what manner of time, this is a little bit what I'm going to talk about, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. See, in Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah beheld the cross. In Isaiah 60, here is the glory revealed. Of course, it's throughout Isaiah, the sufferings and the glory, the sufferings and the glory. David in Psalm 22 saw the sufferings, and throughout the Psalms, he speaks of the glory. He saw both the sufferings and the glory. Jeremiah saw both the sufferings and the glory of Christ. 
Zachariah saw both the sufferings and the glory of Christ. And this here is what 1 Peter 1.11 is speaking of. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven which things angels... The angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end. For the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation, the unveiling of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so this is... Isaiah now, in the spirit, he is seeing this glory in Isaiah chapter 60. He's seeing Christ arising in the heart and this glory shining forth out of a people. And he asks this question in verse 8. As he is seeing this in a vision, he says, Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves? to their windows. And the Holy Spirit revealed this to me um, about a week ago. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows? Holy Spirit brought revelation of what this is talking about. See, Isaiah and the Spirit was seeing them flying as a cloud and as doves to their windows. And he said, who are these in the Spirit? Because what? What did it say? They were searching diligently as to what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which is in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you. And he says, who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves to the windows? And this is what the Holy Spirit revealed to me in the middle of the night. These are those that Thessalonians speaks of. We are caught up together in the clouds with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is speaking of the gathering together. And caught up with the clouds to be with the Lord. See, <laughs> there has been such a misunderstanding of what the rapture is because people get their doctrine from the tradition of men, from books like Left Behind. When the scripture is very clear, if we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, and these things are all over the prophets. And this is what Paul was speaking of. Caught up together in the clouds. Those are those that, who are these that fly as a cloud? See, <laughs> it's living out of the heavenlies to manifest Christ. Caught up together with him to ever be with the Lord. To become one, to behold his face. That the Lord becomes my light. He becomes my sun. The sun no longer is my light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give me light. But the Lord has become my everlasting light. The rapture or the raptizo, which is the Greek, is being caught up with him, to be with him, and to live out of heavenly realm. It's not be, talking about being taken out of the earth and going to heaven so everyone else can suffer. No. See, this doesn't happen until after the tribulation. 
And this is so, so very, very clear in the scriptures. And that's why I, as I was opening, I began there in Isaiah chapter 59, 59, 59, which says, The enemy shall come in like a flood, and the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And this standard is the glory revealed out of a people who fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows. See, the doves to their windows is speaking of those who bring the gospel of peace. And it is that window, they fly to the window, and the window is that opening of light to the world. This light of Christ. And they will take the gospel, and all nations will flow to hear Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first. They shall bring thy sons their silver and their gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel for he hath glorified thee. All nations flowing to receive this light and to behold this light of Christ. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the timing of this. You know, as in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul says, I beseech you, um, let's actually just turn there real quick. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, or the parousia, the appearing of our Lord, and are gathering together unto him. See, here's, here is this gathering together unto him. Caught up with the Lord in the clouds. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows? I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the coming of the Lord. And are gathering together unto him. That you, soon, you, um, that you, not, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. The day of Christ is speaking of the glory and it's speaking of his judgment. They come together. And his glory and his judgment are going to come forth out of a people. That you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. That falling away is the Greek word apostasia. It's Apa is away from, stasia is the faith, departing from the faith. That day shall not come except there come an apostasia, a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed. And so what I'm going to pause here and stop here and uh, I'll come back into this point a little bit later. Bless y'all.